Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. We've got a fun one for you today. We've got an image up here, the one on the right of the band. When I hover over it, it's going to have a gradient background. A bit of text is going to appear and we can see a bit of the image behind. When I pull my mouse back off of it again, it's going to go back to normal. This is really easy to do. There's no coding involved in this today. You can do this all with the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. And I'll show you exactly how. It's really easy. Now if people are mousing around your site, something like that happens, it's going to get their attention pretty quickly. Okay, well let's start from scratch. I've got a page over here. Let's enable the visual builder. I'm going to go down, I'm going to add a new section, just click on any existing section, little blue button. I'm going to make mine a regular section. Inside, I'm going to add a row with two columns. Obviously put as many or as few columns in as you want there. Now depending on what you want to pop up, you can use pretty much any module you want for this. I'm going to use a blurb, purely because it's got an icon. Now let's just style it up the way we want it. Put your title in here. I'm just going to say gradient overlay. I'm going to roll down a bit. I'm going to use an icon instead of an image here. And just for expediency, I'm just going to grab that icon right there. There is a crazy amount of icons. They've just teamed up with Font Awesome 4. You can scroll through or you can search. Well, they've got a breakout box here. Makes it easy for scrolling. But like I say, there's a lot of them. Okay, you can link your module if you want people to be able to click on it and take them somewhere. You can link the title one place and the whole module somewhere else or use the same links if you want to. Always best practice though. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site to somebody else's, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Well, let's give it the background that we want there. I'm going to hit background. And we've got color, gradient, which we'll use today, image, video, background pattern, or background mask. And you can combine several of these together if you want to. I'm going to use a background gradient. I'm going to click the little plus to add the gradient. By default, it puts in a gradient with two stops, a little blue and a green there. I'm going to keep those pretty much how they are. I'm going to add another couple of stops. Just put your cursor over the line, go to where you want to go single click and you've got a new color change the color click on the color now we'll put a purple in there let's bring that green up a little bit as you i'm sliding it to the left you can see it coming up there and let's perhaps have a black over here again i'm going to single click i'm going to click on the color i've got there i'm going to change that to black Great, so we want to use a little bit of padding to make this the sort of aspect ratio of whatever image you want to show in there. By the aspect ratio, I mean the shape of it, the height and width. So I'm going to go over to my design now. Image and icon. I want to make my little icon white. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to say 50 pixels. That'll work for me. Great. And I'm going to roll down to the text. Our general text, this first one, will do both the title and the content for you. I'm going to pop that all in the middle. I want it light in color. And you can actually do these separately, the title and body text there, styles, fonts, whatever you want. I'm going to leave mine just like that. Now to make this the shape that I want my image, it's going to be a landscape type image, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go down to spacing. And let's add some padding on the top, say 50. And a bit on the bottom. That's kind of the shape I want. I think actually I want to scoot all that up a little bit. So I'm going to uncheck the chain. If you have the chain checked, it does both of them at once. Let's perhaps have 20 on the top. And 70 on the bottom. Or even 80. That's better. That works for me. Okay, well, we've got the sort of shape that we want here. So let's add the actual image that we want to see initially. To do that, we want to save our changes in our blurb module. 
we want to go back into the row, which is the green tab. We're working on column one, column one here, column two on the right. We'll want to go in there and always under content, whether it's a module, a row, or a column like this, you'll find background under the content tab. I would go in there this time. I want to add an image. So we've got color gradient image. Click on the little plus. It'll take you to your media library. You can either upload an image or use an existing one. Let's grab perhaps this one over here. And you may have noticed, or you may not have noticed because you can't see it, that you can't see it. It's because our module's on top of it. And I'll show you how to fade this out and fade it back in in a minute with no coding. But just to check it all, let's go back to our little blurb module here. So I'm going to save the column. I'm going to save the row. We'll go back into the blurb. Now, if you want to see just a little bit of that image through there, you can do that by going to your gradient background again under the content. Background's always under content. Go to the gradient. Click on any of these colors. It'll take you to the color. There'll be a little variegated slider called opacity. If you want to see some of that image through there, just drag this little slider down. And as I'm dragging it down, you can see some of that image bleeding through at the top on this color there. When you're happy, go on to the next one. Do the same thing. We're on the purple now. As I slide it down, you'll see more of that image bleeding through there. There we go. But of course, you don't want to bring it down and lose your writing too much. I like to have a little hint of it there. But that's entirely up to you. Green, I think I'm going to leave fully up like that because if I start pulling this down I think that writing is going to get start to get a little bit lost there but that's entirely up to you and the black perhaps we'll pull it down a bit on that one which is at the bottom now we can see a little bit coming through at the bottom fantastic great well, if you're deciding that you want to use this on tablet and mobile, which it'll work perfectly, of course, I'll have to tap on it rather than just hover over it. We need to change a few things. So let's go into our design here. I'm going to go to the spacing where we actually created the size with padding or the aspect with padding. And this is common to all Divi modules. If you hover up over the dark writing here, see some little icons. So let's hover over the thing we want to affect the padding. I'm going to hit the little mobile phone icon. That'll allow us to do a separate value for tablet. Yeah, I think I'd like to add more padding top and bottom because we haven't got enough of that image back there for my liking. So for tablet, let's say try 50 on the top. And I'll put 50 on the bottom. I'm not going to hit the chain in case I want to add a bit more. Though we need a lot more than that. Let's try 90. Still not enough. I'm going to go 100 there. That's getting towards it. And let's do 70 on the top there. That'll work on tablet. Let's have a look on mobile. Mobile, that's okay. Looks like we need a bit of padding left and right, but it's way too tall, really. And there's a couple of ways you can get around it. You can leave it just like that, and you'll see the center of the image, which will work fine. Or if you wanted to style it a bit more, let's take away most of the padding. Let's say 20 at the top. And we'll say 20 at the bottom. I'm going to put a bit of padding left and right. Just so it's not squashed up against the sides. Then what we can do if you really want to, we can actually get rid of that on mobile, the icon, so that it squeezes down. But that's entirely up to you. Now, as I've just thought of this, <laughs> I lied. We're going to write a little bit of code to get rid of that icon. And it's one simple line. And I'll put it down the below the video for anybody who wants to copy and paste it. So go over to the advanced. And again, this is common to all Divi modules. If you go over to the advanced, you'll have these same things here. We want to go down to custom CSS. In the actual blurb image, which in our case is an icon. Again, let's hover over get the little mobile phone icon on mobile I don't want to see that icon at all so I can say display colon none 
and that way it's disappeared. We still got our text there. The image is more like the shape that I wanted it. But we've got no gradient. When we go back to tablet, our icon will reappear as it will on the desktop. Okay, well, let's make the magic happen now. We'll make it disappear and bring it back when we hover over it. So still in the blurb itself, I'm going to go back to the design. I'm going to roll down there you'll find filters there's some great filters in here play with them you can get some amazing effects the one i want today is opacity and again this is common to all dv modules hover over the dark writing those icons will appear if there's a little arrow this time we can set a hover effect desktops for when your mouse is not on it well i don't want to see it at all there i just want to see the image there it is and hover obviously when your mouse is on it i want to bring that back so we see the gradient and the text there now the time it takes with divi by default to go from desktop to hover state is 300 milliseconds which is just under a third of a second which is pretty quick to me if it works for you fine just leave it there if you want to speed it up or slow it down you can go over to the advanced tab we'll roll on down here's transitions and again this is common to all divi modules this is where you'll find your transitions here's the transition duration there's the default 300 you can slide up or you can type in a value i'm going to take mine up to about twice that maybe 600 and you can fine tune with the little arrows up there don't want it to have any delay I want it to happen as soon as my mouse hits it Transition speed curve, ease will work, but my favorite for hover effects is ease in out. They're all subtly different. Some will work better than others in certain situations. So check them out. But I'm going to use ease in out for this today, 600 milliseconds. Let's save our changes now. Go down and hit the little purple button at the bottom. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. I'm going to roll on down. There's my little image. When I hover over it, our gradient's going to take 600 milliseconds to appear. And then when I let go, it's going to fade back out again. And like I say, that's a really nice little effect to have on your site. People are mousing around and that sort of thing happens. It's going to get their eyeballs in it pretty quickly, which is what you want with a website. So there you go, guys. There's how to create an image with a gradient overlay on hover. Really easy to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.